You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. This episode is sponsored by Google. It's Safer Internet Day. We sign into dozens of online accounts each day, and using strong, unique passwords is critical to keeping them safe. Luckily, Google Password Manager makes this easy by helping you create and securely save strong passwords for the sites and apps you use. So try Google Password Manager and make today safer listening, shopping, streaming day. You get the idea. Get started at passwords.google. Hello, everyone. It's Takuyi here. And I'm Gabby. And we are the hosts of History of Everything, a podcast which you can probably guess by the name is, well, I mean, it's about everything. Do you want to know why people thought potatoes were evil and would give you syphilis? Are you curious about all the stories of the terrible and stupid ways that people have kicked the bucket over the years? Do you want to hear tales about all of the different badasses of history and the lives that they had brought to life? Well, if so, then look no further. History of Everything is just the right podcast for you. It's available on Spotify, Pandora, and anywhere else that you get your podcast from. Join us for some fun and just see how weird and wacky history can be. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. And uh, last week we had our 300th episode, so this is the beginning of a new era, Ken. A new era, that's right. A new era. A new epoch. A new epoch, not sponsored by the hat brand, New Era. Um, But I'm sitting here with Ken and uh, Matt, you're joining us as well. How are you doing? I'm wearing a new era cap, so I'm embracing our new era. Are those the beloved Bulls of Chicago? Yep, the mediocre Bulls of Chicago. And a very, very and I, I, comfortable hoodie. Oh, I love it. It is from the Akron Tennis Club. Thanks yeah. again to uh, Tom, Tom Sargent. Sargent. Yeah. Yeah. Those, I know, Ken, you love wearing it. You said I love the, wearing the hoodie. One of the comfiest sweaters it's the you've comfiest, ever had. Comfiest, yes. Real tennis, not like that regular tennis. Yeah. Psh. Yeah. Well, Part thank of the you. Old era, regular tennis. The regular <laughs> tennis. Uh, well, thank you to everyone who helped us celebrate our 300th last week. Um, this is our first episode of 2023. Uh, in a way, it's our first one we've recorded. We we had a two month uh, break uh, for the holidays, which was the longest one we've had so far. So this is the first time we've been back. We might be a little bit rusty. We've um, all forgotten how to talk. That's true. We've forgotten how to talk. I mean, Jeff didn't even show up because he didn't know we were recording because it's twenty twenty three. Show up. Um, Where is Jeff? <laughs> well, uh, Jeff thought we were recording uh, a different day uh, because it's twenty twenty three. Uh, so he got his dates mixed up. He, he, he wrote went the... back in time. Yeah, he went back and in showed time. up this day last year. That's right. And the power of love couldn't save him. But um, we have some special guests today. And, and since this is our first recording of the year for us, uh, we thought, why not see how much we know about 2022 last year? Because so much happened last year. Um, and we wanted to see if we actually retained any information that was new, not just uh, your general knowledge, uh, trivia, your classic trivia, but actually what happened during the year. Ken, how do you feel about that? Do you know a lot about I 2020? I feel uh, nervous. I do too, because I don't think I retain anything from 2022. Matt? Uh, my problem is I'm already in this new era, and this seems like an old era problem, so I don't know how I'll do with this. So this is really the uh, the MJ versus LeBron debate, the old versus the new. We'll, we'll see what happens, but um, this is our official Triviality Year in Review 2022 episode, and in order to do that, we need a host. He hosted last year's Year in Review episode, which we had so much fun taking part in. Uh, he is coming to us from California, and that is uh, Oakland Five supporter Matt Kirk. How are you, Matt? I am doing well, and happy New Year to all the daily listeners out there. And uh, Matt, uh, you you've been on the show before hosting, uh, and we know that you're uh, just a huge Star Trek fan. Um, you helped write some of those games for us, but um, it seems like you enjoy doing the year in review games and and helping uh, stump us and making us making us look bad. I mean, more than anyone else, just for selfish reasons, I like writing them just to help lock in for myself. You know what, what happened last year. You know, there were some definite iconic things occurred, but as we were talking earlier, yeah, I did 2022 had about 17 different months. So (laughs) a lot that happened both uh, personally and, you know, just globally in the world. Well, we're excited to have you here um, to host the game. Uh, And just a note for, for audio, we're having some connectivity issues. So you might hear a few blips here and there, but um, all the, the important content is going to be coming through, right, Ken? That is correct. 
Um, and uh, in order to play the game, we want Matt to have a partner because Jeff uh, bailed on Matt. So Matt needs someone to be uh, on the court with him, uh, so to speak. And we have a special guest here coming to us from Pittsburgh, also an Oakland Five supporter, Mike Chirpak. How are you, Mike? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Uh, of course. Thanks for being here. Uh, right before we started recording, we talked about all those cool posters behind you, which no one can see because it's a podcast, but I'm sure you'll talk a little bit about some of that stuff. But tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, Mike, I live in uh, the suburbs outside of Pittsburgh. I work at a local retail store, you know, a little conglomerate. No one's ever heard of it. <laughs> We're a lot of red, though. That gives you any kind of a hint. Uh, Walmart. I think you're right yeah. on you're right on the mark with that description. I think it's <laughs> it's somewhere where Mike I think got trapped inside overnight with Jennifer Connolly and we could we could dream we could all dream yeah yeah they actually won't let me leave I'm still there right now <laughs> and uh, and what else uh, do you enjoy enjoy doing in Pittsburgh? I'm big on going to all kinds of local bar trivia. I'm wearing a T-shirt for uh, Radical Trivia. If anyone in in the area you know ever want to check that out. Nice. Other than that, I'm a big gamer. I used to bowl a lot. That's kind of dropped off since the pandemic. Maybe I'll pick that up again. <laughs> All right. Well, we haven't gone bowling as a as a squad, a triviality squad. Maybe we should try doing next. We have four Combined four people. Score of uh, two hundred. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And today we have a, another special rules read sent to us from uh, Brian Harris. So let's roll that one so we can begin the game. Hey, triviality. This is Big Shaq Diesel here with the rules read. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they have accumulated with a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on 5 categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop and be a champ like Big Shaq Diesel. I am the cream! All right, that was the rules. Thank you to Brian Harris once again. And just for the listeners out there, uh, since we have two Matts in the studio, our, our host, Matt, is actually going to be going by his last name, Kirk. So we'll be referring to him as Kirk uh, for the questions and the answers, uh, just to make it easier for you at home. But uh, I'm ready to go. Uh, Ken, um, we have a team. We're going to be together. But Matt, you and Mike actually came up with a fun team name, and I, I'll, I'll throw it to Mike for that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the one we usually use out here on Thursday nights. Uh, we are the Home Gym Deathmatch. Home gym mm-hmm. deathmatch. And what was the name of that trivia that you go play in Pittsburgh? Uh, I go to Radical Trivia, and he also hosts an online game. So anyone interested, just RadicalTrivia.com. Nice. Cool. So they're the home gym deathmatch. And Ken, what do you yes. think we should be? Speaking of home gyms, uh, it's around the beginning of February right now. A lot of people have given up on their uh, resolutions. So we're going to be the Peloton quitters. Like Chris Noth in, uh, and just like that. Spoiler alert. Sorry. It's an expensive <laughs> thing to quit. It is an expensive thing to quit. You're right. Uh, not too many of those on Craigslist, I would imagine. Um, or maybe a Pelotan might be on Craigslist. Pelotan. Pelican. <laughs> Pelican. Um, all right, Kirk, uh, we are ready to play uh, here in the studio. So um, uh, since it is the new year um, and a lot of people are going to be building new houses, uh, we're going to pour some cement uh, into your foundation Please and stop. and feel free. What's the stuff? What's the little rod? What are those called? The rods? Rebar. Rebar? Yeah, make sure to put your rebar together and, and build a house. Ugh. It was bad. I, I apologize. Your worst one wow. yet. It was my worst. I wasn't prepared. I forgot we did them, and then I just remember. We don't yeah. have to do them. <laughs> we don't. The rebar is set very low going uh, forward. <clears throat> All right. Let's kick it off with a sports question. This is the only sports question I have, so that's what you, that's what you get. After nearly 30 years as a manager, Dusty Baker finally scored a World Series win this past year, steering the Houston Astros to a 4-2 victory over the Philadelphia Phillies. Name three of the other four teams Baker managed during his career, or you can have two bonus points if you can name all four. All right, we're just going to lock in with three because that's all we got. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, now I have spent a lot of time putting my trusty and dusty, so I'm, I'm familiar with a few of the teams. Uh, Mike, do you have any idea? Got to be honest with you. I'm not a big sports guy. So all right. I, well, I'm not sure. Um, I know dusty was really famous for being, or for a long time is with the giants. Uh, he did spend some times on the North side with the Cubs and he, I believe was the manager of the angels during the, my favorite era, the Rally Monkey era. So uh, we'll say Angels, Cubs, and Giants. Sounds good to me. We had the same line of thought here. We remember him on the Cubs. 
uh, we wrote Giants. I can't remember if that was the team that they he supposedly invented the high five, or maybe it was the Expos where he was a player. But uh, we said Cubs, San Francisco, Giants, and Angels. All right. Well, no points to start. Uh, he did manage the Giants and the Cubs. Uh, after the Cubs, he went to the Cincinnati Reds, and he is uh, currently, or the team before the Astros was the Nationals. That's right. I knew it was a red team. Mm. Way to start the new year, everybody. Very right. Let's, let's turn wrong. it around right it. away. Let's turn it around. Coming in strong. Let's have a question two in geography. In January last year, researchers discovered a fossil record at McGrath's Flat of a rainforest dating back approximately 14 million years. In what unlikely country was this ancient rainforest revealed? So, Ken, we're looking for a country that wouldn't have a rainforest, but possibly a rainforest cafe. I would say the country I have in mind has a lot of rainforest cafes. Okay. Uh, I, I agree with what you wrote down. And have you ever been to a rainforest cafe? Uh, not in my memory, but maybe maybe I, I repressed it. I had a cup thrown at me at a rainforest cafe once uh, by a child, and I never returned to a rainforest cafe. <laughs> That's all I got. Well, that's a great story. Um, I have never been to a rainforest cafe, and I have nothing to add to this question. Mike, I hope you know a lot about rainforest. I don't. Um, where is an unlikely place for a rainforest is really all I've got to come from then. Uh, United States. I think they have a rainforest in Hawaii, possibly. Well, yeah, I like that. That's We definitely have a bunch of rainforest cafes, so... Yeah. Watch a video about it. <laughs> right. So let's 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 keep it home and say the good old United States of America. That's what we said. Well, unfortunately, uh, McGrath's flat is in a very dry place. It is in Australia. Oh, oh. second choice. Our home away from home. I know all of our <laughs> Aussie listeners are groaning. <laughs> And they're all, all going, right, no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> wow, that was bad. That was good. It was good. Yeah, right. Our neighbors in Australia, they'll get that joke. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's try to get everybody on the board with our question three in animals. Don't try too hard to track down this answer. What breed of dog won best in show at the 2022 Westminster American Kennel Club competition? Okay, we're locked in. Ooh, they know. Uh, don't try too hard to find. I'm guessing this is some kind of a dog for tracking, something like yeah, that. My hunting. first thought then would have been a bloodhound, but I don't know. Ooh, and I love a bloodhound. A whole I love gang a of them. Gang. I'm yeah, not, a whole gang of them. So droopy. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like they're always best in show. I think that they're 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 a pretty dog that people like. I don't know how the dog show works, to be honest. Yeah. Um, Their owners it's love never, to talk. About- it's never the dog I think it's going to be. They never no, is. I have, I have worse than, like, if it's, like, one in seven in the final or whatever it is. I have yeah. way worse than one in seven odds. The, I would just I would just give it to a corgi every year. The They're bloodhound the owners dog. love talking about nuts. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Uh, you good locking in with bloodhound? Yeah. Bloodhound sounds good to me. Yep. We're in with uh, bloodhound. All right, everybody's on the board. It is a round. All right. Nice. We'll just keep saying the same answers. This is going to be a great game. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time it's ever happened, too. First yeah. three answers. Right or wrong. Right or wrong. We're all on the same wavelength. All right. <laughs> Question number four in television. One of the year's most poignant and outstanding news shows was Andor, set in the Star Wars universe five years before the events of Rogue One. In the series, major funding for the Rebellion is sourced by Mon Mothma, played brilliantly by the actress Genevieve O'Reilly. For what other Star Wars production was she first cast as this character? For the record, this is the first Star Wars. I mean, actually, I haven't even seen The Mandalorian, to be honest, uh, or Boba Fett. So I have not watched Andor. I love the writer. He's one of the best writers in Hollywood, but I've not watched the show. Actually, that would have been my guess, so... All right, we are locked in. I also haven't seen it, so I don't have a whole lot of thoughts right. there. Um, so I'm guessing that this is um, it, it's either episode three or Rogue One. Rogue One takes place after episode three, but before 
episode four. I, for the timeline gets confusing, and then Rogue One and Andor in between three and four. So it's it's possible she was in episode three, which led into the other ones. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I think he said Rogue One in the question, so that would make it seem like that's too easy. That's fair. Yeah. So if we want to lean towards episode three, that's okay with me. Okay. We're going to, we're going to lock in with episode three, Revenge of the Sith. All right. I I best know uh, Mon Mothra from fighting Godzilla, but uh, we are going to say Rogue One. Okay. And Matt nailed it. Uh, She was actually, it's this fun story. She was actually cast uh, when Lucasfilm was still its own entity before it was purchased by Disney um, back in 2004 ish when uh, episode three was in production. And then 15 years later, when they were making uh, Andor, they said, Hey, (laughs) we should get her to play Mon Mothma again. She only had like two lines in episode three. And then she goes on to play this brilliant character in, in Andor. So, yeah, episode three, that's what we're going for. Oh, good for her. <laughs> All right. Round five in science. Although its research was first published over 20 years prior, the completion of what project was reported by biochemists in January 2022? We can lock in. Ooh, you know that right away. This is one of the few science facts that I retained. <laughs> Mike, have you retained any science facts this year? I don't think anything helpful. I remember that they successfully put a pig heart in someone, but that's not going to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. And the mitochondria is the powerhouse (laughs) of the. (laughs) I've heard that. Yeah. Um, What projects do you know? The Manhattan Project? I feel like that was completed. Think, yeah, I think we finished that one quite a while ago. (laughs) Yeah. Um, is, Is this like a Y2K thing, maybe? Like uh, the years, so. the Millennium Project, that was a thing. I'm okay with it. I don't have anything else to go. I think off that might have been math, but I think I think we'll just say the Millennium Project. I think the Millennium Project uh, involved uh, some people named AJ and Kevin and <laughs> and all them. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, I mean, initially we were going to say the Alan Parsons Project, but then we realized that that was incorrect, and we locked in with the Human Genome Project. Uh, Oh, yeah. That is what we're going for. Human genome is correct. Speaking of uh, of the Human Genome Project, uh, the humans in this studio are tied at 20 after five questions, uh, and it seems like we've finally gotten away from answering the exact same thing, so we might mm-hmm. have a, a decent game for us today. All right. Let's continue with question six in art. The Just Above Midtown exhibition went on display this past year, showcasing the former Manhattan gallery that championed the work of African-American artists from the mid-1970s until its closure in 1986. What facility is hosting this exhibition until February 2023? All right. I'm out of my depths here. What do you know about New York art museums? (laughs) Well, I could start guessing museums. That's about as far as it would get for me, too. So um, so it's above Midtown or, uh, you know, the only thing I could think of is the Met, to be honest. Um, that seems too easy uh, as like the, the most famous and popular art gallery in New York. Um, my only I can't think of anywhere else unless it's not in an in in an art gallery and it's in like Madison square garden or some other kind of huge area in New York. But, um, what up? Do you want to just lock in with the Met? Yeah. The Met sounds good to me. Yeah. seems like a good place to be. We'll say the Met. So I might've gotten too into the weeds with the clue here. Uh, Ken initially said Guggenheim, which that was a good guess, but that's technically upper East side. Um, the Met is central park East also upper East side. Just above Midtown. Maybe I would know if you would invite me to New York. We're going. We're going. <laughs> we're going to go for Sweeney Todd. Um, but uh, just above Midtown leads me to believe that it would be the Museum of Modern Art, MoMA, which is right under Central Park above Midtown. Uh, and that's what we went with, MoMA. In New York. Neil's Neil is a man about town. Neil is correct. It is the MoMA in New York. Where I got this mug, Ken. Sexless and the city. Sex, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anytime you're in Midtown, sexless in the city. All right. Question seven is in government. 
On June 24th, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade after nearly 50 years of precedent as a federal protection, sending the question of mother's rights back to the states. Name the case that set this new precedent. I remember um, it was one of the, the name is Dobbs, I think. Okay. It's Dobbs v. something, but <laughs> I don't remember I don't remember what it's like a it's it's like a women's health group, but I don't remember the exact name. No, Dobbs does now that you said it, but yeah, what would the first have been? Because I was thinking it's like Dobbs v. Planned Parenthood, but I think the Planned Parenthood was part of the initial Roe v. Wade decision, so I don't think it's that. But I think it's like women's health organization or. Something like that. That's more than I've got. So I guess, yeah, if that sounds good to you. Yeah, it doesn't sound good, but it, it sounds like an answer. <laughs> it sounds like so, an answer, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to say Dobbs v. Women's Health Organization. So we felt it was state versus, um, well, we put Hobbs. I think you're right with Dobbs, though, now that I hear it out loud. But we went you're with Mississippi Hobbs and v. Shaw. Hobbs. Well, well, uh, Dobbs is correct, so I'd, I'd err on the side of giving them half points for this one. This is Dobbs v. Jackson. Oh. Uh, Dobbs v. Who's Jackson? Jackson, uh, Jackson the, Mississippi? Maybe. Possibly. Who knows? All right. No Let's points. Go. No <laughs> points. No, My research didn't go that far. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. They'll save All that right. for 2023. It's, uh, it was like Matt said, Jackson Women's Health Organization. There you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, question eight in vocabulary. This two-word term for behavior that is unapologetically self-indulgent was Oxford's word of the year for 2022. No comment from Norman Osborne thus far. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, I, I already know this one. Uh, it's, uh, they, they were going goblin mode. That's a big meme. He's the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn. So, it's goblin, goblin goblin mode. Yep, if you're going goblin mode, you're. I don't even know how to describe it. I guess how he just did. But you oh, know what? Weird. I'm a bit of a trivia player myself. <laughs> so we uh, said goblin mode, and that is what we're going for. Goblin mode points for both teams. Goblin I've never mode. heard that phrase before. That's because you're old. You're an old I'm man. Old. I think yeah. uh, gaslighting was also added this year, or was maybe that was last year. I can't remember. They might have uh, been by Webster. This was Oxford's. They've never thing. added that, Neil. What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> All right. Question nine in movies. At the 2022 Oscars, Ye Jung Yoon presented the Best Supporting Actor Award, asking the crowd's forgiveness after complaining the year prior about the pronunciation of her name, now that the shoe was on the other foot for her as a presenter. She didn't need to worry as she communicated in sign language that what actor had won. Now, I do know this one because I've gone to three different trivia companies that have done an end of the year review. And this person is in every single one of them <laughs> and I've managed to learn it. So we can lock in over here. Sounds right. good. It's not Michael something, is it? Maybe. Could be. Ah, oh, man, I... I knew I wasn't going to be that great on this one, not only because I'm rusty, but um, I just don't remember it. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember. Um, We're going to tap out. Yeah, we'll say Davis. I don't know. Mm, it's a, He won for Coda, and it's Troy Kotzer. Mm. And if you have not seen his acceptance at the award ceremony, it's it's quite incredible. Um, the, just because... Judging you also being from a you know a marginalized group presenting him the award, seeing how proud she was of, of him in the moment that he had it. Yeah, it was Trey Kotzer. Good pull, Matt. Yeah, nice mm -hmm. job. It's one of, right. one of the only things I've actually learned from going to these trivia events. So good job. that's it. No it's more. one of the only things that wasn't terrible that happened in 2022. <laughs> that's a good point. That's fair. All right, let's finish up round one with theater. 
Great Scott, the Lawrence Olivia Award for Best New Musical in 2022, given for achievement in commercial London theater, went to this show with an edible complex. Mm-hmm. We can lock in over here. Oh. That's, I feel pretty confident based on the hints there that we're probably talking about Back to the Future. Yeah, that's, you know, the Great Scott. And uh, she can... does uh, come on to her own son. I mean, it's yeah. Calvin Klein. How can you not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the all the breadcrumbs are there, and if it's not, then that is that is one heck of a misdirect. Uh, definitely, I guess we'll lock in with Back to the Future. As Ken uh, likes to order at Pub Trivia when we're there, milk, chocolate. Mm-hmm. Um, coming to Broadway uh, the fall of this year, of 2023, Back to the Future. Yeah, it's the Back to the Future the musical. That is correct. Points for both teams. Not everything needs to be a musical. That is true. I agree with you there. Uh, I'm curious I, to see I how it's this great, though. I hear it's pretty good, and it has a, a full size DeLorean on stage, I believe. Um, but uh, we can't really go back in time to change our scores, but we probably don't need to because we're tied, tied at 50 points apiece uh, after one round. Uh, so everything's even here. And uh, after the first round, we just wanted to say uh, just a big thank you to Mike uh, and Matt, who is Kirk for today's game, for being Patreon supporters. Um, if you'd like to join them, you can go to patreon.com slash triviality podcasts, uh, not only for bon- bonus audio content, but uh, what we've been saying lately is that all of our brand new episodes are ad free over there. Um, if you're, you know, don't want to listen on the, the normal networks uh, and hear those ads, but you can just go to, to Patreon and usually Jeff will post them uh, the day before night before. Um, so you get them a little bit early as well. Uh, but there's also some other great perks there too. But uh, Ken, we, we really appreciate all of our patron support, don't we? We do, and we couldn't uh, do it without you guys. Uh, lately, we invested into the Sound of Art podcast because we got not creaky chairs. So we have new chairs in the studio that don't make creaking noises. So hopefully that'll be an upgrade, and my ass is happy. Your ass is happy, uh, and we actually have some new uh, podcast uh, microphone arms as well that we'll have to uh, put together uh, for our next recording. So we have some new arms, some new chairs. Um, and we might have some bionic arms uh, in the near future, depending on how much Patreon support we get. But uh, thank you to everyone who's a Patreon That's supporter. A stretch goal. <laughs> it's a stretch goal. Um, you and, just have to get to six million. <laughs> exactly. Um, and speaking of of uh, Patreon goals, uh, currently as we record, we're at 492, so we're almost at 500. Nice. So we're nearly there. So by the time you hear this, uh, hopefully you'll you'll join us and get some of those ad free episodes and bonus audio content. But join. Matt and Mike over at patreon.com slash triviality podcast. And we can't thank you enough for all that you do. Uh, all right, Kirk, uh, what do you have in store for the swing round today? For today's swing round, we're going to be talking about Ukraine. Ukraine's capital, Kiev, withstood assaults in 2022 during the ongoing conflict with Russia. Several cities around the world stood in solidarity with Kiev as twins or sister cities. Please name the following sister cities to Kiev from their descriptions, followed by the year in which they became twins or sister cities. Number one, COVID-19's first outbreak was here. They became sister cities in 1990. Number two, Marco Ramius was said to teach school here. They became twins in 1991. Number three, The mountain Cor Cavado can be found here, along with a famous statue at its peak. They became sisters in 2000. Number four. The 1896 Summer Olympics were held here. They became sisters 100 years later in 1996. Number five. In the same year, it became one of Kiev's sister cities, this town experienced a mad cow outbreak of a kind. They became sister cities in 1991. Number six, birthplace of Larry, Morton, Wendy, Iggy, Roy, Lenny, and Ludwig. U.S. audiences had to wait 16 months to meet them. They became sister cities in 1971. Number seven, home to the first officially established and continuously operated university in the new world. These cities became sisters in 2005. Number eight, 
The Bach Archive, dedicated to preserving musical history, can be found here. This is one of Kiev's oldest sister cities, becoming that in 1956. Number nine, South Africa's administrative capital. It was not named for a Roman title, but for its founder. They became sisters in 1993. And number 10, the world's most populous national capital city, not including metro area. They became sister cities in 1993. All right, those are the questions. We'll be right back with our answers. Was the Sphinx 10,000 years old? Were there serial killers in ancient Greece and Rome? What were the lives of transgender, intersex, and non-binary people like in the ancient world? We're Jen. And Jenny. From Ancient History Fangirl. We tell you true stories and tall tales of the ancient world. Sometimes we do it tipsy. Sometimes we have amazing guests on our show. Historians like Barry Strauss, podcasters like Liv Albert, Mike Duncan, and authors like Joanne Harris and Ben Aronovich. We take you to the top of Hadrian's Wall to watch the Roman Empire fall at the end of the world. We walk the catacombs beneath the Temple of the Feathered Serpent under Teotihuacan. We walk the sacred spirals of the Nazca Lines in search of ancient secrets. And we explore mythology from ancient cultures around the world. Come find us at ancienthistoryfangirl.com or wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoy bizarre true stories, then the Useless Information Podcast is the podcast for you. For example, did you know that author Robert Louis Stevenson gave his birthday away? Or that there was a football team that played for six years before someone realized that the school never, ever existed? War that a dog in upstate New York was once placed on trial for murder. Well, to hear these and hundreds of additional fascinating true stories from the flip side history, be sure to check out the Useless Information Podcast. That's the Useless Information Podcast, podcasting worldwide since 2008 and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. Be sure to check it out. And we are back with our answers. Uh, let's have the uh, descriptions of the cities one more time, and we'll see how we did. All right. Number one, COVID-19's first outbreak was here. Uh, we said Wuhan. Uh, we thought it originated in Wuhan, but we thought the first outbreak was actually in Italy, so we said Milan. Points for the Peloton quitters, it is Wuhan. Number two, Marco Ramius was said to teach school here. Don't know who you're talking about, but it sounds kind of Italian. So we said Rome. That's We didn't know who he was either, but we just decided to go somewhere in that part of the world, and we said Ankara. Would it have helped if I read it in a Scottish accent? Uh, Marco Ramius was the captain of the Red October, played by Sean Connery, and he was known as the Vilnius Schoolmaster. Vilnius, Lithuania is what we're going for. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Number three, the mountain Corcovado can be found here along with a famous statue at its peak. So we think this is the uh, Christ the Redeemer, which I believe is in Rio de Janeiro. We thought the same thing and said Rio de Janeiro. And points for both teams. Rio is correct. Number four, the 1896 Summer Olympics were held here. Not sure about the uh, 1896 Olympics. Uh, We just took a stab and said Athens. Yeah, we uh, we said Athens as well, and that seemed pretty sure on this one. And it's funny, Athens was a candidate to host the Centennial in 1996. However, it went to Atlanta, which you would figure if they were going to have it in Georgia, why not have it in Athens, Georgia? Because Athens, Greece is correct. <laughs> uh, let's see, number five. In the same year it became one of Kiev's sister cities, this town experienced a mad cow outbreak of a kind. Uh, we said London. Um, we think these mad cows we were talking about were bulls, and I think that this is Chicago. And Matt is correct. This is the Chicago bulls uh, we were talking about. Chicago is the sister city. Uh, we, funny, we said it. Funny enough, I was just going, I just came back from the airport in Chicago, and they have all the sister city flags, and I saw Kiev, so I kind of knew the year, too, so that helped out. That's a there form of cheating. I, knowledge, knowledge is a form of cheating. <laughs> <laughs> 
Number six, birthplace of Larry, Morton, Wendy, Iggy, Roy, Lenny, and Ludwig. U.S. audiences had to wait 16 months to meet them. We thought maybe these were the uh, Koopas in Mario, so we said Tokyo. Yep, we were thinking the same. We were pretty sure those were all the Koopa kids, and we weren't 100% sure that Nintendo was headquartered in Tokyo, but that's what we went with. And these are the Koopa kids. However... Nintendo's headquarters is in Kyoto. Mm. Number seven, home to the first officially established and continuously operated university in the new world. Well, we had no idea on this one, so we just said uh, Bogota. We also didn't know. We figured it might have been in Central or Southern America, and we said Mexico City. All right. Uh, we're actually looking for Lima, Peru. Mm. This is the Universidad de San Marcos. Mm. Number eight, the Bach Archive, dedicated to preserving musical history, can be found here. We said Vienna in this one. Yep, we also went for Vienna because we believe he was Austrian. So that was the only Austrian city I could think of. <laughs> Well, in this case, you got your Bach and your Mozart mixed up. Mozart was the Austrian guy. Bach is definitely German. His last uh, post was in Leipzig, Germany. So that's where the archive is. We're thinking Germany, but we would have said Munich anyway. So no harm, no fall. All right. Number nine, South Africa's administrative capital. It was not named for a Roman title, but for its founder. You guys had a great answer on this one, but we just stuck with Joburg. Uh, yeah, Mike seemed to know this one. He said Pretoria. And Pretoria is what we're going for, yep, as in the Praetorian Guards. Yep, very good. And lastly, number 10, the world's most populous national capital city, not including a metro area. For this one, we said Mexico City. We kicked around a few different answers, and uh, we just landed on Beijing. And with approximately 21 million inhabitants, Beijing is correct. Nice job, guys. Great swing round, uh, guys. That's uh, 25 points that you picked up uh, for your team, the home gym death match. And uh, we only were able to scrounge uh, 15, but I feel okay about that. Those were difficult but fair. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tough but fair. Kirk's questions are always difficult but fair. So you can't get mad at it if you're wrong. They're, he gives you everything you need. I, I come at it from an education standpoint, you know, as long as you feel like you learned something. <laughs> Hey, I refuse to learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, maybe we should just turn on blinders for 2023. That should be the the, the resolution. Like, don't learn anything in 2023. <laughs> See what happens. Don't improve yourself <laughs> one bit. Bliss. <laughs> yeah, not one bit. And then I'm gonna get a little worse. In fact, yeah. And Kirk's <laughs> gonna come back with the year in review 2023, and it's just gonna be zero points across the board. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, we picked up 15 points at Peloton Quitters, bringing our total to 65, but in the lead going into round two, home gym deathmatch with 75. All right. Let's kick off round two with some music. This is my only Star Trek question, I promise. And it's not even a Star Trek question. It just mentions. <laughs> Beyonce's new release last year had the attentions of Klingons, Wookiees, and the Greys as she spelled out how she was unique. Name the song. Well, we are part of the beehive. The beehive? What are we? I don't know. Well, we know we know this answer, so we're locked in over here. All right. So I got as far as writing the word alien down. I believe the word alien is in it. So I'm thinking... Alien gravy. <laughs> oh, the old alien gravy. That's what I ask for when I go to Vegas. Alien... Uh, um, I'm just trying to make sure it's not cuff Alien it. allure. Alien... Um, so the alien one is, uh, I think it's after uh, Break My Soul. I think. It's like track five, track four or five. Um, hold on. It's not Cuff It. Cuff It's the TikTok song. I'm saying Cuff It. I just sang it to get, out, to get it out of my head because that's the TikTok well, dance. It's, it's cuffing season, Ken. It's true. This, this is true. Not for me. It's the old cuffing. <laughs> no cuffs for Ken. Uh, superstar. Alien Superstar. All right. Jeez. I think that's, yeah. He eventually gets there. Mike, did you know this? <laughs> Yeah, you, you hate to see them pull it at the last second like that. It's uh, Alien Superstar. <laughs> and for both teams, name. it is Alien Superstar. Yeah, my partner had that one on repeat like for about a month straight. <laughs> Nominated for uh, Record of the Year, I believe, the, her album. Yeah. Number 12, uh, question 12 is in business. Ethics. Cryptocurrency. <laughs> Sorry. Like, anytime I hear business now, that's all I think of. Business, business ethics. ethics. 
Cryptocurrency took a big hit last year when its third largest broker, FTX, was forced to declare bankruptcy. What two words do the initials FTX stand for? Oh, it's crypto down. I hadn't paid attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I have no idea. I have I have known nothing about crypto. Matt tried to explain Fortune, it. Texas. Fortune Textiles. Texas. Fortune, Textiles. Texas. Fortune, Texas. Sure, We're why not? with Fortune, Texas. You're going with Fortune, Texas? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hey, Mike, how much of your net worth is tied up in ETH and Bitcoin right now? Sadly, none. So I'm um, not too sure on this one myself. <laughs> oh, this this is money from the future. It's the futures exchange. Hmm. Yeah, Matt is correct. It is the futures exchange. Oh, we were so close, Neil. So the CEO uh, was not clairvoyant enough to know that it was all going to crash. And now for tax purposes, I don't own any of these things. And I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Question 13 is in history. On October 21st, a nine-foot-tall statue was revealed in Greenwood, Mississippi, depicting a black male teen who had been lynched over 65 years prior. The unveiling coincided with the release of a film based on the story of his mother's fight to bring his murderers to justice. Name this victim whose memory was honored by Rosa Parks in her fateful decision to keep her seat. We're locked in. Okay, I, I also know this one. It's uh, Emmett Till. Till was mm -hmm. the movie. Just yep. came out on Blu-ray, I think, last week. Pick right. that up working in the retail <laughs> section. Yep, we're also in with Emmett Till. All right, points for both teams. It is Emmett Till. Number 14 in Internet. In the year 2000, there were approximately 400 million people online. Within 5%, what percentage of the human population was estimated to have access to the internet in 2022? All right, we are locked in. Uh, I had a guess, Neil had a guess, and we went right between. Ray, where's your head at with this one, Mike? Uh, well, the numbers from 2000 aren't doing a whole lot for me. I would yeah, we'll that disregard that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be a majority of people, but it could be. Mm -hmm. I just, I just think that even in America, it's probably only like 70 to 75%, um, in the sense that if you count somebody having a cell phone as having access to the internet, so that could be somewhere around 80%. And then also, you know, any of those countries where it's not as, you know, broadband's not available, they might have dial up and they might have cell phone access to the internet so you might be i might i might agree that it might be a little bit over half maybe we say like 50 percent, which gives us 45 to 55 um that sounds good yeah yeah i like that because you know that seems pretty accurate because if not everyone here has it and then you start thinking about all the countries that can't get on at all right yeah what so we're gonna we're gonna lock in with 50 percent. all right so we are thinking that it's probably a little less than half, and we said uh, 45%. Okay, well, uh, surprisingly, the estimated uh, percentage of the population in 2022 that had internet access was 63.5%, oh, wow. with the further estimate that in 2030 that we will get to 90%. Hey, good yeah. for us. Impressive scaling. All right, number 15 in technology. Name the generative pre-trained transformer that was released in November and has already elicited bans and restrictions in its use among academic institutions due to its potential abuse in plagiarism. Mm. Uh, I know this one, Ken. Uh, I've used it quite a bit. It's pretty interesting, uh, and I have one, and uh, we can lock in. I feel pretty good that I know this one. I didn't know what the acronym stood for before, but I've heard of Chat GPT several times. Yeah, there was there was a a college student whose thesis was working on finding a way to like find flags that would let pe professors know when somebody was using it. Um, but you know, it's it's a real problem, I imagine. But I, I'm pretty sure it's Chat GPT too. 
Yep, uh, we are uh, in agreement. Uh, we've been noodling around a little bit with uh, Chat GPT, so that's what we locked in with. The generative pre-trained transformer is Chat GPT, <laughs> which was a complete blind spot for me until I was doing research, and then I saw people talking about this, and I said I should probably figure out what that is, and <laughs> just went down the rabbit hole. And oh, that that could be a problem. Hey Neil, how many Hallmark movies do you think Chat GPT can churn out in a day? Oh, I actually uh, did a little research with that, and I, I typed in, uh, you know, give me a little synopsis for that, and it gave me one that was pretty spot on, so I'm assuming it's a lot, <laughs> and I'm just going to do it right now. I'm going to say, uh, can you give me a short synopsis of a Hallmark movie um, about trivia? And let's see what it says. Oh, dear. Trivia Night is a Hallmark movie about a woman named Jenny, who is a trivia host at a local bar. She is also a graduate student working on her thesis about the history of trivia. Jenny's life takes a turn when she meets a man named Jack, who is new to town and looking for a team to compete in the bar's trivia night. Jack and Jenny team up and begin to fall for each other as they compete in the trivia competition, but they soon discover that they have a past connection that could ruin their future. The movie is a romantic <laughs> comedy that explores the theme of second chances and the power of trivia to bring people together. Are they brother and sister? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jenny and Jack, you know. Yeah. Paul Flaw, wasn't she the host? How was she also on his team? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Dun, dun, dun. So it's not quite, quite there yet. But, a little uh, sinister. Yeah, a little sinister, but yeah, there you go. It did take quite a turn there. <laughs> it did. A little chat GPT. Okay, so after five questions in the second round, it looks like uh, Peloton Quitters uh, only picking up 30 points uh, in that first five, bringing our total to 95, but still in the lead with 40 extra points is the Home Gym Deathmatch at 105. Right, number 16 is in food. Pink sauce was one of the most ubiquitous trends to hit the food scene this past year. What exotic fruit is the primary flavor of pink sauce? I feel bad, Ken, because this was a thing on TikTok, but I refused Naturally. to click it because I was like, I don't really want to, I don't care to know what pink sauce is. So I didn't look at it, and that was something I didn't. I did, you know, little did I know it'd be like a question. Pink slime or pink sludge or whatever that. Kind of. I just remember whoever um, got famous for it put it in a bottle and now it's in stores or something. Let's say strawberries. Yeah, that's good. I hope it's sweet and not savory. <laughs> I hope it's made from grounding Victoria's Secret sweatpants. The pink sweatpants. Yeah. Uh, Mike, do you know? I don't know anything for sure. I remember this being a fad and it going around. Um, I feel like he said it was an exotic fruit. I think I heard yeah. that word. So my right. thought was perhaps dragon fruit, because dragon fruit is definitely pink. Now, if I worked at a coffee conglomerate that served dragon drinks and they were pink, I would tend to agree with you, and I'm pretty sure that this is the dragon fruit. Right. We, we said and, strawberry. And points are going out for the dragon fruit. Yeah, that is correct. See, 2023 is, is teaching us to reason out clues in a question we probably could have gotten to dragon fruit but we had strawberries and pink sweatpants on i don't want anything to do with pink sauce let's just move <laughs> on <laughs> all right question 17 in literature what 2022 film was based on a 2018 murder mystery novel that came under harsh scrutiny last year for its stereotypical portrayal of black characters reluctant when I hear murder mystery, I start thinking of Knives Out and The Glass Onion came out, but there's nothing specifically in yeah. that that would lead me to that. Peel was back this, the layers. Was this potentially Amsterdam? I don't know. Do you, do you have any idea? No. I mean, when you said Amsterdam, that's the closest I think we've come to anything because oh, I'm right. still stuck on The Glass Onion and I know that's wrong. I just love Batista so much. <laughs> Yeah, can't wait for him in the new M Night movie. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna lock in with uh, with Amsterdam. I'm pretty sure this is where the crawdads sing. Ooh. And points for Peloton. Where the crawdads sing is correct. I love murder mysteries, as you know, Ken. But actually, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, have I you? Think, no, and I think it's known regionally as where the crayfish sing, though. <laughs> uh, or like I said, uh, Matt, Amsterdam features Taylor Swift, but I just want to clear the record. You don't have anything against Taylor Swift. We don't want 
Taylor Swift fans coming at you on Twitter. No, I love Taylor Swift. I mean, there's a fan right here. Let's not there you go. put some tension in the team. Her, her grounding on fat karma latte. Swifty. Question 18 is in medicine. Researchers announced the development of a new treatment that would both stimulate the pancreas and block receptors of glucagon. This would represent an effective way to combat obesity and what other widespread related disease. Reluctant. Yeah, but I mean, that sounds like it would have to be diabetes to me. I believe that this is the the shot that Mindy Kaling was using and lost about like 45 to 50 pounds. So it's very effective. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's diabetes. Yeah, we said diabetes as well. And I will not ask you to be more specific, but we are talking about diabetes type two specifically, mm -hmm. but points for both teams. And I was just having a conversation about this with someone and they were saying that a lot of people are abusing the drug that don't have diabetes and there's a shortage now for people who actually have diabetes and they can't get the, the shot, which is a shame. So don't do that. Yeah, so don't do that. All right, question 19 in gaming. Pokemon's latest two-title release in November was named after what pair of reddish hues? Locked in. Is it Scarlet and Crimson, Neil? I have no idea, but these those are red. Not, these were not well-received, if I recall correctly. Uh, Crimson sounds like it would be a Pokemon I game. I will say uh, Scarlet and Crimson. Hmm. So close. Uh, Violet and Scarlet. Damn. Yep. Violet and Scarlet are the correct two. And they're no, fine. No game. love for Alkaline Trio. <laughs> All right. We're going to wrap up round two with our royalty question. King Charles III ascended the throne last year after the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. Beginning with Alfred the Great in the year 886, how many undisputed monarchs of England have been crowned? I will accept an answer within five. Within five? We're locked in with a bad guess. All right. So 886, right? We're in 2023. You're looking at roughly 1,100 years or so. What do you think the average lifespan of a king or queen is at, as the ruler? Probably like only like 30 or 40 years, right? And back then, it's way different, too, because life expectancy has dramatically risen. Right. And, and it's not always like you become king or queen at 20 and then last for 60 years. Plus, you know? I'm sure so, some Game of Thrones was going on. Yeah. So even if we said it was like an average of 20, we're looking somewhere in the 50 to 60 range. Yeah, the first number that came to me was 65, but that was based on nothing. I was just was like, well, it has my, to be large. To be, to be fair, my numbers are completely made up, um, and <laughs> it's it's that kind of math where you just say things with confidence, and then you're like, oh, obviously. Uh, 65 sounds great. It's right around where I was thinking anyway, so I think we can lock in with 65. Yeah, I don't have a better guess, so well, 65. Here, well, here's a fun fact for you guys. There's the same amount of uh, monarchs as uh, United States presidencies at 46. I just made that fact up. It's not true, but we said 46. Ugh, you missed the lower bound by one. The lower bound was 47. Uh, from my research, I could find 52 undisputed Ooh, no. monarchs of England. So lower bound, 47, upper bound, 57. So, sorry, no points on royalty. We were close. We had we had a ballpark. After regulation, it looks like Team Peloton Quitters picking up only 20 points, bringing our total to 115 and extending their lead to 135 by picking up an extra 30 points, the home gym death match. Uh, and uh, as soon as we get these, um, these final round categories uh, met, uh, before we do that, um, just wanted to say come join us uh, over on our Discord channel if you want to just uh, have some fun with some like-minded folks. There's always uh, different things going on there, trivia questions. Uh, there's some watch parties recently. They, they had a uh, Friday the 13th uh, watch party, and before that I believe it was Rocky Horror Picture Show and Roadhouse another time. So it's kind of fun. You can come um, hang out and watch a movie together and, and chat over at Discord, or you can come join us uh, at The Crop on Facebook or on Twitter and Instagram at TrivialityPod. Come say hello, uh, make a comment about the show, and, and we'll make sure to get back to you. What are the final round categories, Kirk? 
All right. Well, I have to give you guys a 15 year old spoiler alert because the final five categories today are named after the final five Cylons from the reimagined Battlestar Galactica. So they are Saul, Tyrol, T Y R O L, Anders, Tori, and Ellen. Uh, the waitress are now locked in. Let's go ahead and get the questions. All right. In the category of Saul. In the finale of Better Call Saul, the final scene features Kim Wexler visiting Jimmy McGill in prison. As she is being escorted out, what gesture does Jimmy shoot her way? In the category of Tyrol. Japan's prestigious Good Design Awards gave the top honor this past year to an unassuming candy shop named Tyrol Doe. The shop uses part of its profits from adult customers to subsidize an in-store currency for children. It's distributed by a system similar to those found in current mobile game apps that randomly award prizes for a set price. What is this type of system called? I will give you two bonus points on top of your wager if you can give me the Japanese name. In the category of Anders. Kimball Anders was inducted into which NFL team's Ring of Honor this past November? After his rookie season in 1990 with the Steelers, he went on to earn three Pro Bowl appearances as a fullback and wide receiver for this club from 1991 to 2000. In the category of Tory, Following the 51-day stint of Liz Truss, the Tories elected which member to assume leadership of the party and to become the next Prime Minister of the UK? And finally, in Ellen. After an historic and troubled 19-year run, the Ellen DeGeneres show came to a conclusion last year. Which friend of the show was Ellen's final celebrity guest? All right, those are the questions, and we will be right back after these messages. Have you ever wondered what really happened to Amelia Earhart or the lost colony of Roanoke? Do you ever find yourself scouring the internet for vicious Victorians and their murders by gaslight? Or perhaps you're just sick and tired of women being constantly misrepresented or plain lied about throughout history. If so, join me, Katie Charlwood, history harlot and reader of books on Who Did What Now, the history podcast that's not your history class, part of the Area of Media Network, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Adios, au revoir, au revoir to zen, my friends. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Throughout history, royals across the world were notorious for incest. They married their own relatives in order to consolidate power and keep their blood blue. But they were oblivious to the havoc all this inbreeding was having on the health of their offspring. From Egyptian pharaohs marrying their own sisters to the Habsburgs' notoriously oversized lower jaws, I explore the most shocking incestuous relationships and tragically inbred individuals in royal history. And that's just episode one. On the History Tea Time podcast, I profile remarkable queens and LGBTQ plus royals, explore royal family trees, and delve into women's medical history and other fascinating topics. I'm Lindsay Holiday, and I'm spilling the tea on history. Join me every Tuesday for new episodes of the History Tea Time podcast, wherever fine podcasts are enjoyed. All right, we are all locked in. Uh, let's go ahead and get the questions one more time. We'll see who comes out the cream of the crop. All right, for our final five, Saul. In the, fin in the finale of Better Call Saul, the final scene features Kim Wexler visiting Jimmy McGill in prison. As she is being escorted out, what gesture does Jimmy shoot her way? Uh, for 15 points, we said it's the finger guns. We wagered 15 as well, and that's one of the gestures you can shoot. We said finger guns. 
And finger guns is correct. Nice job. In Tyrol, Japan's prestigious Good Design Awards gave the top honor this past year to an unassuming candy shop called Tyrol Dough. The shop uses part of its profits from adult customers to subsidize an in-store currency for children. It's distributed by a system similar to those found in current mobile game apps that randomly award prizes for a set price. What is this type of system called? We have no idea what that's called. We just said Lotto, and uh, for the Japanese term, we said Pachinko, also wrong. We uh, we talked around it a little bit, and we thought about, like, loot crates and things like that, but uh, in some games I've played, you can buy, like, you spend a set amount, and you don't know what you're going to get, and they call it a gotcha-style machine, so uh, we went with gotcha. And we wagered 20. And you will get 22 points, because you picked up the two bonus points as well for gotcha. In our category for Anders, Kimball Anders was inducted into which NFL team's Ring of Honor this past November? After his rookie season in 1990 with the Steelers, he went on to earn three Pro Bowl appearances as a fullback and wide receiver for this club from 1991 to 2000. Uh, simply because his name is Anders, we went with the Vikings. We're smart. Uh, <laughs> we wagered 15, and uh, this was my prime Madden playing days, so I remember he's a, on the Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs is correct. In the category of Tory, following the 51-day stint of Liz Truss, the Tories elected which member to assume leadership of the party and to become the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom? For 15 again, we went uh, with Rishi Sunak. Unfortunately, we uh, didn't wager on this one, but I did know that that was Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak is correct. And finally, in Ellen, after an historic and troubled 19-year run, the Ellen DeGeneres show came to a conclusion last year. Which friend of the show was Ellen's final celebrity guest? We put 15 points on this one. We said uh, Jennifer Aniston. Uh, we wagered 30, and I didn't even pick up on friend of the show as a clue, potentially, but we also said Jennifer Aniston. Well, even without the clue, you got it. It is Jennifer Aniston. Okay, after the final round, uh, Team Peloton Quitters only picking up 15 points, uh, bringing our total to 130, which is respectable. Yeah, it's fine. But the victors of today's game are Home Gym Deathmatch, who had their way with us in the final round, picking up 82 points, bringing their total to 217, making them today's cream of the crop. I am the cream of the crop, and don't forget it, Dutch boy. Hey, first cream of the crop of the new year for us in person. You guys crushed that final round. Yep. It was lined up well for us. That's the only one I had nothing on was the Chiefs, so... Well, good work, folks. Yeah, and Mike, we're you were you. you were pumping uh, barbells there in the final round, <laughs> listening to the questions. So we figured you were going to take us down. That's that's one of the things I've learned throughout all the trivia I've done is like I pay super close attention to the wording because you never know what's going to be in there that's going to actually be like, oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the hints, and uh, those hints were thanks to a great game written by Kirk. Yes, thank you so much uh, for putting t uh, today's game together. Uh, just as good as uh, last year's year in review. Any any final shout outs or anyone you'd like to say hello to uh, before we bid you adieu? Absolutely. I cannot have, I would not have been able to do this game had it not been for four amazing playtesters. I had Tony DePhillips, Luke Leavenworth, Kristen Pilot, and Jeff Clear. Also need to thank Judge JP for some last minute additions. Uh, so if you didn't know that, uh, question about the oscars that's due to him because i asked a much more uh unreasonable question for the oscars in the test game and he <laughs> said yeah i might want to tone that down so best best uh, documentary short yeah right <laughs> that would have been good well well thank you jp uh, always a pleasure having jp on the show as well and i think uh kirk you just met him in person for the first time is that right yeah, it was really cool. He was in town uh, just a couple weeks ago for the uh, Pokemon, well, the first of the year. Um, they had their uh, VGC series here, but they also were playing the card game and Pokemon Go. It was like a whole Pokemon explosion at the convention center. So uh, I didn't make it down for any of that, but we did get to uh, have a nice drink together on the last night and uh, we snapped a pic and it turned out great. So, yeah. Well, we look forward to having uh, JP on the show again. I know he has a game ready to go. Uh, but uh, a huge thanks uh, once again to Mike for joining us today. Any final shout-outs? Uh, we know you're trapped inside of your, your store, uh, but uh, anyone we can uh, send to help you? Uh, yeah, I'll shout-out Radical Trivia one more time. That's my buddy Jared's company. 
if you're anywhere in the Pittsburgh area, you know, look them up, RadicalTrivia.com, Tuesday nights online. Anyone can join in there. And uh, shout out to my brother, Matt, and my buddy, Tyler, because I know they're going to listen to this. So shout out to them. Awesome. Well, thank you both for uh, for being Patreon supporters and everyone else who supports us on Patreon. Uh, Ken, uh, as it's going to be tradition now moving forward with our, our new network, uh, we'd love to uh, plug a few shows that uh, are on the same network as us. Yes, uh, as always, thanks to Airwave Media uh, and their other great shows, Ancient History Fangirl, Pulse of the Planet, and the Pirate History Podcast. Aren't you going to check that out, Ken? I am I, I don't have <laughs> I don't I don't part. I don't know how to respond to that either um well uh well thank you to everyone for joining us today you know Jeff couldn't be here uh we'll see him again uh next week uh thank you to Matt as as, as always but uh since one of the questions mentioned uh chat GPT we thought it was only fitting to let chat GPT send us out with an outgoing message and uh Ken why don't you uh read what it uh wrote for us thanks for tuning in to another episode of Triviality We hope you enjoyed the show and learned something new. Remember, knowledge is power, and there's always something new to discover. Don't forget to tune in next week as we explore more interesting facts and trivia. And for our listeners in Illinois, we want to give a special shout out to our home state for all the amazing trivia tidbits we found here. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you (laughs) next week. And that was Triviality.